Hey YouTube, it's Craig here and I'm back with a new video. Finally, sorry it's been so long. I was sick for a while, been going through some stuff, but I'm back with a new video and I'm excited to talk about the Waterman's numbering system with all of you guys. And to go through all those numbers, I've got my count shirt on. It's actually made up of numbers, which is pretty cool. I'm ready to talk about the Waterman's numbering system. One of the reasons why I'm so into Waterman's, well, pre-1930s Waterman's, it's because this numbering system makes everything easier and I hope this makes sense. Last night I went to the Pelican Hub in Orange County and it was basically the Orange County Pen Club meetups, but with some better food, a lot more space. I made a lot of new friends, saw a lot of old friends, my friend Nick Pang is there. I picked up a pen from him. So this is a cool 14 with a 14 karat gold clip and a 14 karat gold band that says, in friendship to John F. Waldorf from Bulletin Staff. So that's what it says on there. And it has a cool nib. It actually says Richard's Owl, Washington DC number four. So it's not a Waterman nib, but it's a, it's a cool pen nonetheless. So thank you, Nick, for that. He also made a new desk blotter for me. So I have a 173 Broadway desk blotter, which you will see in this entire video. So thank you for making that for me. And dude, it was so cool to see you. And it was awesome talking to Minaj and Sean and just, you know, hanging out with all my, all my friends. So let's get right into this video about the Waterman's numbering system. I'm gonna start off by showing you a bunch of pens and they all have one thing in common. They all have the same size nib. So we're gonna go through a little bit of how the numbering system works from the start of the company all the way up to about 1930. But I'll give you a better understanding of how the numbering system works with these pens. All right, so we're gonna start off with some of the earliest models of Waterman's, which basically came in three different styles. There was the zero or the straight cap, the one or the cone cap or slip cap, and the two, which is the taper cap. So straight cap, cone cap, taper cap. All of these were just eyedroppers. They didn't have any other filling systems yet. They did have one experimental one, which was the syringe filler, which is extremely rare. Um, I've never seen photos of it. I've only heard of it but those were from the 1890s and very hard to come by. All of these have varying different sizes nibs. I just wanted to show what they kind of are. So here we have a number two. It's just a black chased hard rubber, it just has a number two. Since there is no number in the tens spot, that tells us that is just a straight cap eyedropper. So there you go, number two size nib, straight cap, that's it, pops on there. This is also a straight cap eyedropper. It has a gold filled cap and barrel, but we will go over what those numbers are. There's essentially a number two. This is a number four. This is a very early one. I don't have the correct cap for it, but it has this really old feed and this old nib on there, but it is a number four. There's no number anymore on it. A lot of the earlier ones didn't have numbers. You just see the nib size and be able to tell what it was but this is a number four with a number four size nib. From there we get into the number one. This is actually a number 14. So there you go, one, four. So this is a cone cap or slip cap eyedropper, a number four size nib. Same thing, cone cap. There are more numbers on it. We will go over what those other numbers mean. For now, one, four makes this a Slip cap, cone cap, eyedropper, and same here. There are more numbers on the bottom. One, two, there you go. And lastly for these, we have the taper caps. The taper caps, this is an early one, pre-globe. This is a 24. The two stands for the taper cap. The four stands for the number four size nib. And most of the pens are usually marked on the bottom. This one is not, it's an early one. They didn't always mark them. It wasn't a standardized thing until around 1908. So when they standardized having all of the numbers stamped onto the bottom. Although later on, you'll see that there are other pens that are, still weren't marked for all of the, the numbers, just the base ones. And when you post it, 
It's supposed to emulate a dip pen. People were afraid of new technology. So here is a modern pen that is made to emulate something that you were used to. It's like how when we first got smartphones, they kept slapping a keyboard on it because it was uh, more conventional. Another taper cap. It's a much shorter pen, but when you post it, much more comfortable pen. And our last taper cap here, this one you can actually see the numbers on. So there you go, a 2.5 taper cap, number five nib. Nice number five size nib on there. And these are all eyedroppers. So you would unscrew the section, fill up the pen, put it all back together and you're good to write. They're not the most practical just because you have to constantly unscrew them and fill them up, but they did have a good ink capacity. Now we'll get into suffixes. So if it had a one in the 10 spot, it usually means that it is a cone cap eyedropper filled pen, but they would add suffixes to the end of it. So if it was a 12 S, it means it is a safety pen. Here we have a 12 S. Has that retractable nib on it. And back in the day, any safety pen was just a screw cap pen. That's all it meant. Next, we have another suffix. So this is a screw cap. The P stands for pocket and the V stands for vest. So it is a shorter vest pocket it has a screw cap. This isn't the right cap for it, but it is a short vest pocket pen. And this is also an eyedropper still. So still an eyedropper, unscrew the section fill up the pen, put it all back together. The next one we have is also P, but instead of pocket, it means pump filler. And on the bottom of the pen, you can see that it says 12P. It's you know, hard to see there, but they would also mark it with two ones. So see this one is a 113. It is a number three sized nib pump filler. Just another way of marketing it. But it is a slip cap pump filler. So what you would do is you would unscrew this part of the pen and you would, it has this little bit, it's missing the little ball at the end. You would stick this in a bottle of ink and you would pump up the ink into the, the body of the pen. And then you would screw it all back together. And that was the pump filler, a 12P. We only made these from 1903 to 1908, but there you go. 12P or 112 or 113 or 114. That is a pump filler. The next suffix is SF or sleeve fillers. These are all sleeve fillers. These were what replaced the pump filler. And it's this little sleeve that slides down. You push this little bar and it pushes down on the ink sack and that's how you fill the pen. These are slip cap self fillers. Here we go, 12SF. 14 SF, 0512 SF. We'll get into those other numbers in a second. And a 412 SF, this one has an early star nip on it. All of them have that sleeve filling mechanism on it. So that is the 12 SF. The next one is one I don't actually have. This is basically what it would be. It is a POC, which stands for pocket, and it is a screw cap eyedropper. They later changed the name after 1917. We will get into that in a little bit, but a POC is a screw cap eyedropper. So 12 POC. Lastly was the PSF. This is my coin filling pen. It is called a 12 PSF pocket cell filler. So therefore it has a screw cap and it has a slot cut on the side so you can use a coin to fill it. So it is a self filler. When they made the move to lever fillers, they kept the same name. So it's still a 12 PSF pocket self filler with a screw cap and a lever to fill the pen. Stick this in the bottle of ink, pull down the lever, pull it back up, it fills it up, good to go. This is a little bit later, this is around 1917, right before they changed the numbers. And it is the same thing, it has a lever, it has a screw cap, slightly different threads. This is a 412 and a half PSF. So it is a skinnier version in sterling silver. 
it is the same same idea it's a screw cap screw cap lever filling pen but the half means it is skinnier this is a 12 vpsf so it is a shorter lever filling screw cap pen so v is for vest and it is shorter and lastly this is why they changed the numbering system it was getting ridiculous here we have a 412 and a half vpsf it's just crazy it gets to the point where the number is almost wrapping around the entire pen but this is a screw cap lever filling narrow so skinnier vest sized pen so it's skinnier it's shorter and it also has sterling silver on it but it was after this they go okay that's enough we're done with this we're just gonna change the numbering system and the only thing i don't have in my collection that is part of this is if there is a four in the ten spot it was a desk pen and if there was a six in the hundredth spot it is a mother of pearl barrel so that's why this is a six one two it is a mother of pearl barrel with a slip cap and a number two size nib. In 1917, they streamlined the process and made the numbers a little bit more easy to follow. So now the units place is still the nib size. And in the 10 spot, that means what sort of filling system or what the model is with nothing else on it, a zero essentially in the 10 spot, it is a straight cap eyedropper. If there is a one, in this case, here's a 12. It is a slip cap or a cone cap eyedropper. A number two, so a, in this case, a two five. Taper caps, loops numbers hit the same. There was no number three. If it's a number four, it is a safety. In this case, this is a 42 and a half, a skinnier safety. A five is a lever filler. Thus the 52 is a lever filling pen, number two size nib. The six, I don't actually have an example of the six, but a 62 would be a slip cap lever filler with a number two size nib, but I don't have one in my collection. Then there's the number seven. This is a 72. And the number seven is a screw cap eyedropper. So what was the POC? A 12 POC is now a 72, just streamlines the whole process. There was no number eight, no number nine, and that was that. The one exception to that numbering rule is the number 20. Number 20 should be what? A taper cap with a zero size nib? Well, no, it is a cone cap with a number 10 size nib. They decided to just take the number 10 size nib and the number 10 for it being a cone cap and they put it together and made this the 20. So the 20 was the one exception to that rule. All right, now we get into the 100 spot. With the 100 spot, you have numbers that go from two to nine and they basically mean the adornment, the overlay, the barrel bands. So we're gonna get right into that. So this is a 222 which mean it is a silver barrel overlay with a taper cap and a number two size nib. Next is the number three, which this is a 314, so it has a gold barrel overlay, a slip cap, and a number four size nib. Next is the number four, so number four is a full silver overlay. On the bottom we have 452, lever filling, number two size nib. Next we have the number five, this is a 514 PSF. So this is a solid 14 karat gold overlay cap and barrel lever filler number four size nib. I don't have a true example of a number six, but it would be essentially like having two solid gold barrel bands. Granted, this one isn't marked as such, but a number six would be two solid gold barrel bands. Number seven is one solid gold barrel band. This one is marked 752. Lever filler, number two size nib. I don't have an example of a number eight, but that would be a solid gold cap band. And then a number nine, this is my only example of, of one, uh, but it would be a solid gold top cap band. This is just mark 52. You can barely read it, but 
Granted, this pen needs a lot of work. But if there's a zero in the thousands place, it means gold filled. This pen, it's an 0552. It has a gold filled overlay. And some other examples, here's another 0552. This one is a half size, so it's 0552 and a half LEC. LEC was one of the other suffixes that they added, but they kept, but it is a slimmer. Here it is compared to a regular 52. And the LEC stands for lower end covered. So if you can see there, it says 0552 and a half LEC lower end covered. These are really nice, really great pens, very slim. Uh, the only problem is if the lever breaks, they're really hard to repair because there's no way to just remove all of this overlay. With this, you can kind of, because it has that rubber end, you can knock out this part of the section that you can repair it pretty easily, but when it's completely covered, it's a little harder. Some other examples, this is the exact same thing to this, just a different design. And this one is marked 452 and a half LEC because it is a full silver pen. Some models weren't marked with what their overlay was. For example, here is that 752 with those, with the, it's actually marked 14 karat gold. The clip is 14 karat gold. The lever is 14 karat gold. Uh, it's actually marked on there. This is a 14, but it would be a technically a 714 because it has a factory 14 karat gold barrel band and the clip is 14 karat gold as well. But for whatever reason, they didn't mark it. Also in the UK and Europe, they did not, it wasn't standard for them to mark the pens. So a lot of them just don't have anything on the bottom of them. Here's a little baby safety. So it's a 442 and a half V. So it is a slimmer, shorter safety pen, that number two size nib, and it has this little extra slip cap on it so that you could have it attached to a chain and then you could still use the pen without having to have this chain hanging onto it. Here is the exact same thing with the slip cap and everything. In a hand engraved floral design, but this is a, Here's, it has the earlier number system, but it is a 12 and a half V S baby. But this will later become an 0542 and a half V. To give you guys a little idea of some of the things, uh, here's another half size pen. This is a 12 and a half. It is just a little tiny eyedropper ladies secretary pen. And then here is a 412 and a half. It's been marked as such on there, 412 and a half. Same exact thing. It also didn't become standard practice to mark the pens with the, uh, the Sterling overlay or a, a lot of the overlays. Like with this one you saw, I mean, this is still a pretty early one, but it didn't say, it doesn't say that it's gold filled or anything like that on the bottom. Same with this, this just says 14 on it. It doesn't say that it should be a 414, but it doesn't. Here is a 472 and a half V. So again, another screw cap eyedropper with a number two size nib. But this one is the Sterling Silver version with the little slip cap as well. I'm realizing this is gonna be a really long video, but it's all gonna be worth it. Here are some of my Ripple pens. These are all lever fillers. So we have a 58, a 56, a 55, a 54, a 52, a 52V, and a 51V. So I can kind of go through and show you, like they're all pretty much the same thing, just all different sizes. So the number eight size nib, six size nib, five, four, two, two, one. Number eight size nib, number six size nib, number five. My number five and my number four are Canadian. Doesn't really matter. Number four, the number, uh, so the 52 and the 54 actually have the same size 
do they have the same pen size? They just have different nib sizes. My 52V is was made for the French market, so it has uh, nickel trim. Look at the little tiny 51. It's adorable. The 51 was made during the Great Depression, and it was to save on gold content. It's super tiny. There you go. So if you're ever like curious what a 50, what a 56 is, there you go. It's just a lever filler with a number six size nib, and they just get varying. They're just different sizes. That's all. Here's another 52. This is the 52X. It is just a <laughs> number two size nib, but the X just means it's a different sized barrel for the body of the pen. So this is a number five sized body with a number two size nib. They made this during the Great Depression as well to kind of save money. Hey, here's some smaller nibs on some full size pens. But yeah, another weird one. And lastly, we're gonna get into the pens that don't make any sense. So here we have a number seven, a number five, and then this is a stenographer's, but it's marked as a 12, but it's not, And but we'll get into that. Well, sort of. So in 1927, Waterman's introduced the number seven. It's to break it to you, but the number seven, it is a 55. Here's a number 55 right next to it. They are the exact same thing. They have parts that are interchangeable. They both have a number five size nib on them. Even though this is called the number seven, it is even marked on the bottom as a number seven. This is a number 55. It was just marketing the number seven for $7 in six different styles. They later added more because the seven for seven and six doesn't sound very good. And they ended up adding a couple more colors, black, gray, and brown. There's also the illustrious white, which I don't believe actually exists, but yeah, this was the start of them moving away from the numbering system that in my mind, makes a lot of sense. I'm sorry if I've been all over the place with this. It's just, I have so much fun talking about it. To marketing and names and that sort of thing. So we have the number seven. Then we have the number five. The number five is, uh, it's kind of a weird one. It's actually a number four size nib on it. But here's my number four. I mean, it's a, it's a number four size nib. There's just more of this one showing has that keyhole nib on it, but it's way shorter than a number four. Has this really cool flared cap. It's the only other pen, the only other pen that had a flared cap was like the, the checkbook pens. These weren't marked at all. These just little narrow number two size nibs. The number five for $5 in five different styles. I think it just came in red, pink, green, gray, and purple. I think that's all they came in. So they had this, then they moved on from that and they started calling things like the 32, the 92, uh, the, the 94. I don't really understand the, the system after that. There wasn't really a system. It was just model numbers, I, but I, they didn't really have anything to do with the nib sizes or the overlays or the filling systems or anything like that. I mean, everything from there on out was pretty much just a lever filler. Uh, they had some eyedroppers, but um, this is a 1930 stenographers. You can even tell just by the, the different looking logo on there. Um, it's very oxidized, got it from my friend Gabriel. This is called a 12. I mean, it is sort of a slip cap. I mean, it is a slip cap, but th that is not a number two size nib. To give you a little point of reference. That's a number two size nib. So I don't know what size that is. It's smaller than a, I think it's smaller than the, I don't know what size that is, but here's the number one. That's a number two, but it's weird because it's marked that it's a 12, but it doesn't have a number two size nib. This is the era where I just don't understand. So that's pretty much it. That's, I mean, once, once they hit the 1930s and they started moving away from that numbering system, I just, I don't, I don't really care anymore. Anyways, I wrote all of this kind of stuff down. Uh, I messed up there. Sorry about that. But I am going to link 
down below vintagepens.com, David Nishimura's whole page about this stuff. He, I mean, it, this is what I followed. Maybe if you go through that, you'll understand a little bit better. I just wanted to kind of show you some of the pens and talk a little bit about, this is one of the reasons why I like Waterman so much is because this system is pretty easy to follow and it's fun. You can go online and see like, oh, what kind of pen is it? As long as you see that barrel end and you can see those numbers, like you have an idea of what it is. There's a lot of other companies that are just way more, uh, I, I don't understand anything. But really Waterman's after the 1930s, they kind of went down that direction. Like they had model numbers that don't make any sense. Let me know if you guys, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, um, you should. I'm actually gonna move the camera real fast so you can see the chaos. That is <laughs> all of the pens <laughs> I was just talking about. It's absolutely chaotic. Uh, I can't believe I've been filming this for an hour, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions, if you have any insights, uh, this was this is what happens when you have a you know ADD and too much coffee. You get stuff like this. But yeah, thanks for checking this out, you guys. I'm happy to be back making videos. We'll see you real soon. And that's the video. Thanks so much for checking it out, you guys. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more content like this. It'll be a lot more Waterman's history, Waterman's this, Waterman's that. I'm very into Waterman's, pre-1930s at least. Check out my Instagram, at Craig Rocanova, and check out my website, 173broadway.com, as I go through and upload my entire collection and make it into my virtual museum. So happy to share that all with you guys. We'll see you all in the next video. All right, peace. so crazy though is like that's not all of them i have more up there but i also have my entire case that has more of them in there i didn't need to talk about all of them uh like there's a 52x but in cardinal red or orange i mean cardinal red it's orange and 0755 but on the bottom it just says 55, a 16, you know, I, I, yeah, another 58. They need to talk about all of them. But anyways, yeah. Chaos, chaos will reign forever. Don't know why I'm saying this. Also, thanks Aaron for restoring my pen.